Good morning and welcome to the September 2014 A-Team training. My name is Scott Becker. I'm the Executive Vice President of Business Development and I'm going to be conducting the training this morning. First, I want to start off by thanking everybody. We put together what we called the, the uh, a CARDIS Reset Meeting and everybody participated in this. The agents from very off various offices got together, did some roundtables on different subjects, gave us feedback, gave us best practices, and gave us advice about what we can do at the agent level to be the best that we can be with the CARDIS business. We did the same exact thing with the office managers, brought the, the office managers from each of the office together and said, what can the office do in terms of how the assignments are made and, and how the communication exists and what we can do to help our agents? Our branch leaders had huge involvement in this and they, they got together and they said, what can we do as branch leaders to be better at this business? And finally, the business development team had a series of meetings in which they got together and said, you know what, we've done a good job with this. We've been platinum. We've been Cardis Cup uh, winners. We can always get better. And where have we slid? What, have, what are we not doing that we could that we could be doing again? So we've put together a series of best practices, a series of different things, and all of that is going to give us training and ideas and really great sharing for probably the better part of a year uh, worth of information that we got out of that. It's all being compiled. We're going to deliver it in modules, and you can expect to start seeing it in October of 2014, so next month. We'll give you a binder, a resource manual that you can go through, and, and uh, as we do the training, you'll have the various uh, best practices and things that agents are doing, not just the compliance and the how to, you know, how to follow up and those things, but real smart ideas that people are doing to set themselves apart with customers and achieve a greater result. So thank you for everything that you've done. We're really looking forward to that guiding our future and our direction as, as we continue to get better as a company. But right now, I really need you to stop what you're doing. If you've got your smartphone out, put it down. If you're looking off in a different direction, take a look at the screen. We have some really important information for you today. It's going to be uh, paramount that we really capture this information, understand it, and walk through the next of the year on a very specific game plan to make sure that we achieve what we all know is incredibly important, platinum status. So let's jump in. Where are we on platinum? Well, uh, for those of you that uh, don't know, we have three different areas that we need to earn platinum in. So there are three specific areas that we, that we earn platinum for. The first is Northern Virginia, which is called NML. We are tracking for platinum currently in Northern Virginia. The problem with that is that last year we were nominated for a Cardis Cup, and it was based heavily upon the achievements inside of this territory. We are 16 points behind where we were last year in the NML anagram. So while we are tracking for platinum, we have lost some of our focus. We need to get back on point. We have some specific things that we're going to meet, need to be, be focused on. In the NMM anagram, in, uh, which is our Maryland area, we are three points behind platinum status, and we are seven points behind where we finished the year last year. Finally, in our CTE anagram, which is primarily the Stafford and Fredericksburg offices and areas, we are minus three points and again tracking seven points behind where we were last year. So we've got some work to do, guys. If we all know what, uh, what platinum can mean when we have platinum and our competition does not, that's big bucks, extra bucks in our pocket. When we have platinum and, the, and our competitors have platinum, it's good, solid business. But God forbid that we don't make platinum and our competitors do, that really could be devastating for us. And we're never, ever going to let that happen. Please take my message very seriously that we have work to do to get there, but please understand that there's no way that we are not gonna make platinum in all three of these anagrams. It will happen. Let me give you a couple of statistics that'll sort of point out where we are achievement-wise and why maybe we, uh, we need to step it up a little bit. So let's just take a look. What I did is, is look across all three anagrams. 
This is uh, different measurements from different anagrams. So if you're in CTE, NMM, or NML, one of these statistics belongs to you. And I just took sort of the, the biggest and widest gap areas so that we could see where we've lost a little bit of focus. On buyer conversion, we are currently in one of our anagrams, 44%. We finished the year in that same anagram last year at, at 50%. We are 6% behind the pace. Seller conversion, 27%. We finished in that anagram 31% last year. We're 4% behind the pace. The next one just crushes me. It's just a sense of pride for me that, that really hurts. Customer service, 82% in one of our anagrams. That same anagram finished at 90% last year. We are 8% behind the pace. Honor the source. That's uh, pr primarily USAA mortgage and NFCU mortgage. We're delivering at 49%. So 49% of the time they are using the honored source. That's 9% behind where we were last year at 58%. And then finally on agent generated referrals. That's a hundred, we're just the USAA goal I'm, I'm showing you here. The USAA goal for us is 159 for the year of 2014. So far, we've delivered 78. So really not, not hitting the mark at all on where we need to be on agent generated referrals. And I wrote a smaller number there down there, 34. 34 is the number of agent, agent generated referrals that the person who's doing our lead router scrubbing has generated for us. So not only are we, are we not achieving in this metric, but the primary person that's putting the majority of these referrals in is, uh, is working on lead router for us. So we've got to do a better job. USAA knows a couple of facts. They know that they deliver more business to Century 21 New Millennium than they do to any other broker in the country. They know that more of their members live in our territory. Two million live in the DC metro area. And they know that we've delivered 78 of them into the program. And they don't think that's good enough. And the truth is, they're right. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, we, we've taken the first step already. We talked as a team, we all looked and said, we don't, we don't win this by the agents doing a better job. We don't do this, win this by the branch leaders doing a better job. We do this by everyone doing a better job and everyone firing on all cylinders with great communication and great teamwork. That's the strength of our company. And it goes all the way up to Todd and Mary Lynn who need to hold us accountable and make sure that we protect the golden nugget, nugget that we have and that we do this right and we follow the game plan from here to the end of the year. So this is probably a pretty familiar slide, but we haven't shown it for a little while, and, and it's really important. This Nothing's new here, the five pillars to platinum. Conversion, customer service, honor the source, business building, all on a foundation of great paperwork, great communication, and great follow-up. That's what gets it done for us. Now we're gonna drill that down just to be a little bit more specific and say, where specifically do we need to get these points from? Well, conversion, we have an opportunity, depending on which anagram we are talking about, between two and six points are available per anagram. Service, we have an opportunity to pick up anywhere between two and four, depending on which anagram we're talking about. Honoring the source, we have an opportunity to pick up two points per anagram. Agent-generated referrals for USAA and NFCU, Apologize, this is actually a typo. It's NML and NMM, where we have an opportunity to pick up four points in each of those territories. CTE, we're actually tracking on this, but we need CTE to stay strong and continue to help us to achieve the overall goal. Card is sales leads, three points per anagram. So we're gonna talk a little bit uh, further about card is sales leads today because it's really, really critical that we achieve this, the, the uh, metrics here. This is something that we actually can control our own destiny with. If we're able to accomplish this, we would be tracking for platinum in all three. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and what our specific game plan is. I'm gonna skip out for a minute. You all have a, a Word document. 
And on that uh, Word document, it looks like this. It's the Century 21 New Millennium. It's what we call kind of a smart card. Uh, and it goes through the very specifics. This is an incredibly important card. If you don't know this information, we need you to know this information. Some of this may be repetitive, but this is where we have to fire on all cylinders. So let's hit it real quick. The first thing that we want to talk about has to do with how communication and our initial contacts equal conversion. So what happens, right? You have an initial referral that's received by the agent. You get a text from your office. Are you available? You say yes. And the next thing you know, three emails come over from relocation. The referral information sheet, the referral acknowledgement form, and the initial contact form. Need you to read that information sheet, accept, accept the referral via, with the link that's there. Establish contact and build rapport. We need to contact immediately. When you accept a referral and say, I'm available, that means I'm available to call right now. We have instances, I'm currently uh, running uh, and the branch leader for our DC office. We've had an instance where we lost a referral that came in, it got scrubbed on our lead router system, it got assigned on a Sunday of Labor Day weekend, and by the time we called it, which was a grand total of one hour, that lead was already gone. So it is a fast world where we need to be on top of things and we need to communicate fantastically. The key is that we start out and really know that, you know, the, the goal of what we're trying to do when we call somebody is to build some rapport with them so that we can, with a buyer, set up an appointment for a buyer consultation or for a seller, set up an appointment for a listing presentation. Often, I think maybe with that call, we try to do too much. So we want to establish rapport, make them like us, make them feel good about, hey, I've landed in a good spot here. This person sounds like a good person. They seem organized and I want to make an appointment with them to take the next step in the process. That's what we're looking to do. This one is paramount, guys. If a phone contact is given, that is absolutely the best way to build rapport. Follow it up with an email. Send both if you'd like, but make sure we're not relying too much on email. It's a big problem that's going on in the world today. Everybody wants to talk to each other, but nobody wants to actually say anything. And it's a, it's a huge issue. We need to make sure that we're using the phone as our primary way of getting in touch with people. So a couple of things can happen, right? What happens if all communication points have been tried, but no contact is established? At four hours, you're going to send your initial contact. If you haven't made contact with that person, the only way that, that you won't do this, guys, is if they've written down please don't call me till Sunday or I'm in Bangladesh. Don't call me until three o'clock in the morning. I know there are instances. This sheet is for 90% of our referrals. Use common sense when it lies outside of this. So we want to complete that, that initial contact sheet, even if we didn't make contact, and you want to forward that to your branch leader. So you'll get a confirmation back in your email. Always forward that to your branch leader. You don't have to write too much in there. We're looking to see is this referral getting connected and we're looking to fire on all cylinders with great teamwork and help you if it's not getting connected. So a couple things can happen from there, right? Okay, we've sent that initial contact, but then in the next, sometime within the next 24 hours, we've got a, uh, we've, we've been able to connect to that member. Well then, at that point, what we're looking to do is take that same link. You can take that link and fill it out as many times as you want. Click on that same link, say, I've got an appointment with them. Here's my appointment date. Click it, you'll get the confirmation. Forward that back to your branch leader so they know, hey, that referral has now gotten connected. There's, we're, we're looking good, I'll focus my attention somewhere else. On uh, One thing that I wanna make sure <clears throat> Is that we're doing is as soon as we've got a, uh, on the listing side, as soon as we actually have an appointment, make sure that we're getting that, uh, that listing package sent out. So order the pre-listing package, say, hey, I've got an appointment. Let's get that out the door, get something to that member the following day. It makes us look fantastic. It's a great package. And it says, hey, we're serious about business. You're going to have a great customer service experience with us. And then finally, you may get through that whole 24 hours and there is no contact. 
or you've made contact and at some point during the referral a couple weeks later you just can't get in touch with this person and they're not returning your phone call that's when you want to email your branch leader and let them know that you have not either made initial contact or you've lost contact the branch leader is going to has a set of emails that they can send they're very very short they'll copy you they'll copy the relocation team we've given all of that to them and that's going to help them know that hey I uh, you know that, that's going to let them know that you need help to get in touch with that person and quite frankly for whatever reason it is every once in a while putting a branch leader title on there or some different title and a and a good email lets people know that we're trying to get in touch with them and the people will respond as always it's critical that we have the file number on the subject line of the email you guys know how much email you get you can imagine how much a branch leader and or the uh, relocation team gets the more organized and easy it is for them to look at the subject line see the file number look it up in the database the quicker we can process through all of this and, and help people customer service what are we trying to do at the initial meeting we are always referencing the program name that's a key component of what we need to be doing we want to show a copy of the survey you have laminated copies that are there with you as a handout today please save that we'll have them around the office show it to people say hey you came into this program and you were looking for I, I assume that part of the reason why you took a referral from USAA is you're used to getting great customer service with them well it's important to them and it's just as important to me so I want to show you what it, what this is going to look like when we're all the way done with this and you've closed on the house I want you to feel very comfortable that this was one of the best experiences that you've ever had um, remember that if it's if it is not an affinity referral if it's an affinity referral we cannot send a century 21 quality service survey even if it if we get through and somehow send it it won't count the systems talk to each other and they'll disqualify that that quality service it doesn't count in your percentages uh, it, it's a fact of life and that's the way that 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 is handled so uh, but please for broker to broker and corporate we can send a, a quality service so if you're talking to a referral from another broker or you're working on one of our lead router and then it would be totally appropriate to talk about the Century 21 Quality Service Award. Uh, you guys are going to get some great information today about uh, about uh, the um, JD Powers Awards, and, and so there's a great way to set it up. And then you want to check in during the referral and always be asking, are they receiving the the, the exceptional service? And you really want to know the answer to that question, having nothing to do with the survey if you keep asking and you find out maybe the little thing that they're looking for differently often it's not hard for us to deliver those things at the settlement table we want to again have a copy of that survey and show it explain the overall difference between you know what overall service is and what the agent service is and that both are really important and that both are about uh, are about you explain that the, the timing of the survey that they'll probably receive it in about 16 days when you're sitting there at the settlement table then five days after the settlement that's a good time to be just checking in with somebody giving them a call not talking to them about the survey just talking to them about how are things going at the house what's going on are you getting settled in it's just a, a great customer service way to check in that's a, maybe a nice time if, if you've really had a great experience to talk to them about referrals and the fact that that you, know, you make your living off of getting uh, off of receiving referrals. Then finally, uh, you will get you're going to get a post settlement reminder, which is emailed to you through Relospec and it has the customer's name. That comes the day before you are going to do your uh, they are going to get the survey. So please call your client, let them know, hey, within the next day or two you should be getting uh, that survey that I talked to you about all along and boy would it make a difference to me if you returned it this is critical guys go back to what we were th what we were showing and the points that are available for us on service we have to increase the number of times that people who liked our service go in and fill that survey out because it doesn't happen and I know I'm going I'm, gonna, I'm I, I can see around the room as I'm staring at my screen 
and recording this. I understand that there are challenges with finding the survey or the customer didn't receive it and we can't order another one. But right now, laser focus, let's, let's talk to, to the USAAs and the NFCUs and hope that we can influence and make changes for the future. But right now, we between now and the end of the year need to get a bunch of surveys returned and that's gonna take organization and great follow up on our part. Honoring the source. You've got an initial call to the buyer. That's the time that we really need you to be talking about and figuring out whether or not they're going to use the honored source. With USAA and NFCU, obviously that's USAA and NFCU mortgage. If you're working on a lead router lead, if you're working on a lead from uh, that's a broker to broker, then the honored source is considered to be First County. So what are we going to do? We first of all want to know, are they pre-approved? If they're not, there's your numbers right here, the numbers for origination that they can call. We definitely want to do that. Certainly, if it's not a USA or an NFCU, First County, your own branch loan officer is the person that you'd want to be getting them in touch with. If the client <clears throat> is it ever considering using another mortgage company at any time during the referral, the key is that we jump on that save the deal and so quickly. And that's going to be sent to relo at c21n.com. We're going to copy our branch leader and copy the office manager, send a great subject line that says save the deal on it. Our relo team, again, is going to see that and they're going to prioritize that and jump on that for you so that we can get a quick answer back to you, find out if we're able to, to, uh, to save that deal and do something for do something for that that member. Uh, if the client truly cannot qualify with USAA or USAA or NFCU does not have the program, then and only then would we want to after after USAA comes back with a save the deal and says that's not something that we can do, that's when we would want to go to our own uh, loan officer. That would then be considered the honored source at that point. Um, you can always explain to a client that, hey, you know what, if they're looking to shop around, they're looking for somebody else, boy, we've got a great loan officer in our office. They'll do a fantastic job for you. But why don't we go to USAA first? I've got a special strike team. That it's different than the one that you call in your 800 number. Let's talk to them first, and then we'll go back. And I know that uh, the person in my office will have no problem doing this if they can. How does that sound to you? You move on and hopefully that, that's, that's a way that we get it done. So the moment that a contract is ratified, you have some specific ways that you have to make sure that you're uh, getting that connected. Remember that the member has to make live contact in order to set that date. Here are the numbers for where you either, the member can call USAA or email them the contract, we can email them the contract or fax them the contract. Same for NFCU. Remember that we have an honored source on title, and that's uh, Bay County or Hazelwood or Capital Title or Maryland First. If I'm missing any, please let me know. Uh, we want to make sure that you're notifying the, your office manager when you turn in that processing sheet and that the honored source is the title. Please make a, a note of it if you're not going to use the honored source on title if, and, and explain and give some reasoning as to why that is happening. The honored source uh, mortgage company cannot meet the settlement date. This one's common, guys. And so if you call the 800 number for USAA, it's likely that they're quoting a 40 or 45 day turnaround time. That does not mean that they can't do it in less time. That's when we need to critically save the deal right then and there. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, before you make another call, I have a special strike team. They can get me an answer immediately. Can you please take a call from them? They're going to call you. They'll, they'll call you within 24 hours. If, if they somehow can't do it, I have no problem that our lender in-house would be able to turn that around and get it done for you. Save the deal um, has been done and the honored source cannot meet the settlement date. If they truly can't, obviously that's when we would want to go to our uh, first county loan officer. We would want to notify our branch leader and office manager at that time and confirm and just make sure that we've reported everything correctly to USAA so they understand why that's happening. Um, 
simple stuff. Contract is a new construction or cash, cash deal. That doesn't make a lot of sense to sometimes people. Like they're getting a $20,000 benefit. Why are we saving the deal? We're saving the deal because every once in a while, there's a high authority from USAA who can talk to that new construction site and get USAA to be an honored source. We're also doing that so that they have tracking and know which builders they need to go to and so that they just understand their pipeline and understand which members are going to be using their program and which members are not and why that's happening. Uh, the client is using the honored source, but a service problem is happening after they've made application. So this is after they've, they've, uh, after they've made application, they're in the system, but they're not happy with their process or how things are going. Please remember that that's actually labeled a mortgage escalation. It means they want different service or help. And the file number and the mortgage escalation is really the key information that we're looking for there. So I know that that's kind of rudimentary stuff, guys, but that helps, you know, when we went back to that slide, the slide that shows our, our uh, you know, all of our different people that are available to help you, if we're not communicating and doing that systematically with all of these referrals, then we can't really uh, institute a lot of the things that, that really will help us move these things forward. So let's jump back into a couple of things that I want to make sure you're aware of. Uh, it's just a simple change that we've made to the initial contact report. It looks very similar and very familiar to what you've seen before. But you can see in the initial contact if the buyer is using the, uh, the honored source and the drop downs that are available there for you. What's different is if you don't put this information in and you try to click the submit button, it's going to tell you, hey, you haven't filled the whole form out. So it's critical information that we need to know. Please fill it out correctly and make sure that, that everybody's aware of what's happening with that referral. Same thing with an update request form. So you guys have seen this before, the one that you get every two weeks. It's asking you, hey, are they going to honor the source? Unfortunately, guys, I know that uh, you're going to have to click yes or no each time. It takes 10 seconds, uh, but we, it can't automatically, the way the system works, it can't remember what you filled out the last time. So please make sure that you're filling that out and that you're clicking and saying yes, because things do change through the course of, of somebody looking. And we want to make sure that we're, we're jumping all over it at the time uh, that we can really make a difference. A couple of special projects that are really going to change uh, our momentum and our ability to improve upon a couple of these areas. First of all, on service, there will be a call from the relocation coordinator. That email, that, that, that call um, will be after an email has still been sent to you from the relocation to the agent. That email, that uh, automatic thing that, that uh, Relospec does, tells you, hey, your person uh, is likely to get the survey tomorrow. Please give them a call. And it happens to copy your branch leader and office manager as well. But at that point, relocation has been relying on you to make that call. And we really think it's most important that you do make the call since you have a great relationship with them. But we're going to make the call as well and we'll help explain the nuances of the survey in case that's difficult for people. And so they'll be making that phone call at 16 days. What's critical here is we cannot stop a survey from being sent from USAA or NFCU. That's not possible. But we have a whole follow-up program where we're telling that customer when they can fill the survey out, where it is, and we're constantly reminding them, please, please, please fill that survey out in as nice of a way as we can. If you've had bad service or there's just something that happened in this and you don't think you're going to get a good return, please send an email. This is critical, critical, important. Please send an email to relocation with the file and say, please don't remind them. It doesn't mean that they won't get a survey, but it means that we will not send all of our reminders and we will be not, not be making phone calls to that person reminding them to fill that survey out. The second thing that's new is relocation is going to go back and uh, set up a spreadsheet of all of the people that have not filled the survey out for us. We can't send them a new survey, but we can send them an email letting them know this is the date that it most likely came to you. This is the subject line. And if you could go back and look in your junk mail or in your deleteds and fill it out for us, boy, would we be so appreciative of that. We'll send that list out to be approved. And again, 
we need you to give us feedback and say, oh, the Johnsons, don't do that. I don't know that, that we would get a good survey from them. It's okay, guys. We would rather that you tell us. You don't have to go into great detail as to what happened. Um, just let us know, hey, that's probably not somebody we're going to get a great survey from. Let's not go back and remind that person. What we will do when we send that email, that email will go out. It will, you will be copied. So again, if you could say, hey, you know, I, I know you got an email from our relocation department. If you've got a great relationship with that person, you're the influence that could get them to click into their inbox and check and see, hey, is that survey there? If you call them and you did a great job for them and you guys are friends, they're going to do it for you. Another special project, I talked about this. This is really, really important. So I mentioned that we could get three points per anagram for a, a qualified car to sales lead. So I'm going to uh, jump over to a document in a second. Um, when we jump over that document, I'm going to remind you that really the most important thing that we could have you do, if you think you have a car to sales lead, email it to your branch leader. They'll know how to help you. They'll know how to move that process forward. What I want to make sure everybody knows, this is uh, hot off the presses. If your branch gets a qualified sales lead, then, you are, then everyone in your branch meets their business, goal, business building goals for the year of 2014. So if, you didn't, uh, if, you're, if you're two settlements behind and you don't have anything in the pipeline, but somebody from your branch, one of the agents from your branch, is able to get a qualified sales lead, then everybody in your branch makes the goal together. So let's just talk real quickly about the handout that you have. Let's jump over to it. What is a qualified sales lead? You're probably dying because you're thinking I'm going to read the whole thing. This is important and I really do want you to, to go ahead and read it. But basically what's, what's most important that you know is that you would be submitting it to your branch leader. So just we're looking for a name. We're looking for contact information. You'll submit that to your branch leader and Kerry Mulvey will then call you and help you walk through how we could best connect this. What we're looking for is a company that moves a minimum of five people per year with a relocation benefit. So it doesn't have to be a giant company. It would be best if that company was in the area because it's going to create more income for you. But the company can be anywhere in the country. So if you know anybody anywhere that is connected to the HR benefit of providing relocation benefits, typically that's a CEO, a CFO, a COO, or the HR director. If you know any of those people, and we can get in touch, and they would be willing to listen to Cardis's presentation, which takes about 20 to 30 minutes, that's a qualified sales lead. If it moves forward and it actually turns into a sales lead, there's an additional point. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a signed contract, that's an additional point. But just getting them to listen and take the appointment gets us a platinum point, which is so important to us right now. So last thing that I would just want to point out to you, these are some of the benefits for an employer if you want to get into a little bit of a conversation. Um, you know, what in it for me? I, that's another typo. Sorry about that. What's in it for me? So what I think is, is so crucial about this is that you'll get a fully marketed and consistent way to get all the referrals from a company as opposed to if you have a relationship where you maybe are getting referred to a few people here and there. There's going to be a referral fee that, that is attached to it, but it's a way to get into places that you probably, as, as yourself, may not be, get, be able to get in and say, hey, you're moving 100 employees, send them all my way. Uh, that would be pretty difficult for, a, a, uh, for a, a corporation understand to understand. But if they were working with Cardis and a whole relocation team, that would be easy for them to understand. Uh, you'll get the first word of refusal on any business that's generated. Uh, depending on how these deals are done, I'm sorry, I can't give you an exact number, but Depending on how much the relocation benefit is that's offered to the employee, uh, Cardis gives a discount to us on that referral fee. Sometimes there is no discount, especially with smaller companies, tends to not be much of a discount. But whatever discount is given to us by Cardis, you'll receive the entire uh, that entire discount. So if the referral fee is reduced by 10%, you'll get the full 10% uh, reduction in referral fee. Again, if you're able to get one of them qualified, then your entire branch is going to make their full business building goals for 2014. 
We're going to have platinum status, more business, and we all know exactly what that means. Let's just jump into our last thing. And uh, we are looking at uh, AGRs and a special project that we're doing there and a special announcement. So agent generated referrals for our USAA and NFCU. Number one question we're going to start asking everybody is, did you serve? That's how our lead router guy gets all of these. Our lead router guy loves doing them because he knows that he's got about a 3% chance of connecting it as a typical lead router referral, a typical e, you know, electronic contact to our company. But if he introduces them to a USAA or NFCU benefit and provides value to that person that he really doesn't know, he now jumps up into the 30 and 40% chance of closing, the, of closing that referral. So that's why he does it, and that's why I think you should do it too. And, and the best way to find out, start out by asking somebody, did you serve? We're really looking, though, for who do we have to influence this and get this done in, in the, you know, the 100 days that we have left. We need to figure out who are we working with right now who could have a USAA or NFCU benefit. And it may be as simple, guys, as looking at a contract that we have. If they're using USAA or NFCU for their mortgage and they're not in that program, that's probably the easiest way that we could possibly identify them. Um, you certainly always have the choice. We see that information as a company. We would never go in and do that, but we probably will be asking you, is there anybody that you know that we could possibly put into this program because we so desperately need it? If you as an agent are able to submit, so submit a brand new one, not ones that we've had in the, in the pipeline in the past, but a brand new submission, and we're able to settle that before the end of the year, you're going to get two settled business units for that. What does that mean? It means if you did a wipe the slate clean at the middle of the year and you paid 375 and you now get two settled units for this, we're going to give you under our policy the $375 back. So that's if you have uh, done a wipe the slate clean. If you are two behind, then you would, you would meet your goal. What if you've already done your two settled units? What's in it for you? Well, then we'll roll that settled unit over into next year so that that AGR is going to count towards your 2015 settlement goals. So we're dead. We're really serious about that. We've never done that before. Uh, it's, it's a tough thing for us to track. It's a tough thing because next year we're going to have a big goal too. But we need the activity right now. Who are we working with? Who do you know? that might, uh, what we might be working with right now, who, could, who we could put into the program, new as of today, and who might settle before a year end. Anybody who can help us with this, you're helping the entire company. Uh, we'll do everything that we can to uh, you know, <laughs> make that worth your while uh, as best that we can. So last thing that you guys are gonna do today is take a look at your own branch statistics and really try to get a sense of where it is that you are today, where it is that you're trying to get going. We have branches that are doing well in certain categories. We have branches that are struggling in certain categories. Get together, figure out what's on this list, ask your branch leader questions. We can and we will make platinum in all three of our anagrams. You guys are uh, amazing. You are the uh, four years running Cardis Cup nominee with, a, with one win. You are triple platinum for the last four years. You are platinum for the last five years. Uh, you're an incredible group of people. We're going to get this done and very much appreciate your attention today. Thank you.